All right. I don't even know if you guys will listen to this one seriously because I'm going to do it in class, but a student was assigned the task of determining the enthalpy change for reaction between solid MgO and aqueous H cell as represented by the net ionic equation above. So I kind of get a kick out of this. I probably don't need to talk about this, but I will. MgO is a solid. And remember, solids, liquids, and gases you leave alone. And then it says aqueous HCl, which is, you know, um, hydrochloric acid. And then that would turn into, because this is a double replacement, magnesium chloride and water. Actually, this is a weird equation because this is considered a basic oxide. But anyways, this is what happens. And you end up needing a two here. So one magnesium, one magnesium, one oxygen, one oxygen, two hydrogen, two hydrogen. And you don't really need to know that. I just think it's interesting because remember, solids and liquids leave alone. You only do stuff with aqueous. And so HCl is a strong acid, so it dissociates like this. And then magnesium chloride is soluble because chlorides are soluble to said, except for silver, mercury, and lead. And so that would dissociate into magnesium and two chlorides. And then you can see why the chlorides cancel and why this ends up being the net ionic equation. Okay, interesting. You don't, that's neither here nor there, but I thought you might get a kick out of it. So here's the thing. Um, so a student is assigned the task of determining an enthalpy change for the reaction between solid MgO and HCl as listed by the equation below. The student uses a polystyrene cup calorimeter and performs four trials, and the data for each trial are shown in the table below. Um, and then here's the first question. Which is the limiting reactant in all four triangles, HCl or MgO, just to find your answer? The thing that I think is interesting about this is it says all four trials that, you know, the one you pick in trial one or trial two or trial three or trial four, all four of them are the same. You know, whichever is a limiting reactant in trial one is also the limiting reactant in trial two, which is kind of a nice thing. Basically, they're telling you just pick one. And you know me, I like trial one. So what we have in trial one is we have 100 milliliters of 1.0 molar HCl. And then we also have 0 0.50 grams of MgO. And so the question is, what is the limiting reactant? Let me just go back again and show you. Um, so we have one molar HCl, 100 mils, and we have, oh, sorry, this is 0.25. Um, it's 0.25, not that's trial two and four. So I'll go back and do 0.24. And notice the one to two mole ratio. I'm probably going to come back here again. But here's the deal. Let me just do the first one. The first one is we have 100 mils um, of one molar HCl. Remember, one molar means one mole uh, per liter. And we get a problem. Milliliter doesn't cancel with liter. So we know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. However you do this, I personally love double cancels. Um, 100 milliliters is 0.1 liter, 0.1 times 1. So we have 0 0.10, just two. This has four sig figs, but this has two, and this is a definition. So we have a tenth of a mole of HCl. And then switching pen colors, just so that you can see the difference. Then, and by the way, I could have done 0.5 because it said any of the trials. In trial one, we have 0.25 grams of MgO. And I happen to know that MgO has a molar mass of 40.30 grams because um, Mg is 24.30 and O is 16. And when you do that, um, so two decimal places, two decimal places, you get two decimal places. And 0.25 divided by 1. Hang on, i got to find my calculator. I'm going to hit pause just for a minute. Okay, I'm back. Um, so when I do this on my calculator, I didn't have a calculator, sorry. I get 0 0.0062, two sig figs, uh, mole of MgO. 
Now, guys, there's a lot of ways to do this, but remember I keep talking about number sense, and they said justify your answer. So if I go back here, um, we can see that for every one mole of MgO, um, you need to have two moles of HCl. And so another way of looking at this is, instead of making this much more complicated than it is, but like I said, there's lots of ways that you can do this. Um, obviously, so it's, uh, let me just say this again. It's, let me just switch colors. For every one mole of MgO, it reacts with two moles of the HCl. So we have this one to two mole ratio. So um, if this, um, so what I'm going to do is we're supposed to have um, twice as much of this as this. Now, and the one is at the MGL. So I'm going to double this. If you double this, it would be 4.01 um, Two four moles. So um, so point zero one, not point one. So obviously this is much more, much more than um, this. And so the interesting thing is, um, there's lots of ways you can do this. When we taught it to you very mechanically last year, we would say, well, if you do this, you um, you have point one mole of HCl. And if you look at the balanced equation, for every two moles of HCl, or H plus, same thing, you will make one mole of water. So you have enough to make half a mole of water. Um, but you have 0 0.0062 moles of um, MgO. And for every one mole of MgO, um, you get one mole of water. And so in this case, it would be 0 0.0062. You have enough MgO to make six one, you know, 62 uh, ten thousandths of a mole, however you want to do it. You have enough um, MgO to make this much water, but you have enough HCl to make this much water. So obviously this is the limiting reactant. Or like I said up here, um, because this is, when you double this, you get less than 0.1. This is the limiting reactant. If you doubled MgO and you got more than one, then this would be the limiting reactant. And so however you look at it, the answer to the question is MgO is the limiting reactant. And that's going to um, matter. That is going to matter um, in the, ne uh, the next one. The data in one of the trials is inconsistent with the data in the other three trials. Identify the trial with the inconsistent data and draw a line through the data from that trial in the table above. Explain how you identified the inconsistent data. So I'm going to go back two slides. I thought this was pretty tough. Um, so what I did was, First of all, over here, I calculated delta T. Remember, delta T is always T final minus T initial. And so here, delta T is 26.5 minus 25.5, or 1.0 degrees Celsius. And then this is 29.1 minus 25. So this is 4.1 degrees Celsius. And then here, delta T is 28.1 minus 26.0. So this is 2.1 degrees Celsius. And then here, delta T is uh, 28.1 minus 24.1. Uh, so this is 4.0 degrees Celsius. And here is how I'm going to think about it. Um, now, what's interesting is these two have the same mass. Um, so remember, Q is equal to MC delta T. And C is going to be 4.184 because that happens when you have water solutions. So the masses are the same, and Cs are the same, and the delta Ts are pretty close to the same. They're 4 and 0.1 and 4. And then here's this 25. Well, this is 1.0, and this is 2.1, so they're not very close at all. Which one makes more sense? Well, if you cut, what's half of 0.5? 0.25. If 
if it's pretty accurate when it's four, and then when you cut it in half, it should be two. So interesting, I think trial one is the crappy trial because these match and because 0.25 is half of 0.5, you would expect that delta T would be roughly half and it is. Um, remember, th these are the same. If the masses are the same, the delta T should be the same and they are here, but they aren't here. So one of these is wrong. And then if it's roughly four degrees when it's 0 0.250 moles, you would expect it to be half of that. That's an interesting question. So I would say, just to answer the question, trial one is the bad trial. And then um, trials uh, two and four were, uh, trials two and four had the same mass. very uh, similar delta T's. Um, trials, uh, so trial one is the answer. Now I'm, this is the explanation. Trials one and three have the same mass, but uh, the Delta T's were not very close. Uh, trial three makes sense because 0.25 is half of um, 0.5. I should have units here. And delta T of 2.1 is half of 4.1 and 4.0. All right, enough said on that. Um, so now going to the next slide. For part C and D, use the data from one of the other three trials, not from the trial you identified a part B, and assume that the calorimeter has a negligible heat capacity, which means we don't have to have that little fudge factor in there, and that the specific here, this should be specific heat, I need to fix that for the calorimeter is 4.18 joules per gram degree C. Assume that the density of water is one milliliter. Calculate the Q of the thermal energy. Very interesting on this, just like your lab, Q of the reaction, plus Q of the water equals zero. Q of the reaction plus MC delta T equals zero. Q of the reaction plus, this is interesting, it's 100.50 because I decided to use trial two going back it's different. Trial two, you have 100 mils of HCl, but it's um, the density is one. So one mil is 100 grams. So 100 mils is 100 grams. And then plus half a gram of MgO. So hopefully you can see 100 plus a half is 100.5. And notice in trial two, delta T is 4.1 because that's going to be important. So I get 100.5, and then the problem says 4.18 joules per gram degree C. This cancels this. And then delta T is 4.1 degrees Celsius. This cancels this, equals zero. And then um, I'm going to keep all the places till the very end. Q of the reaction is, I'm going to do 100.5. 5 times 4.18 times 4.1. And by the way, if you did it for a different trial, that would be fine. 1722.369 joules equals 0. And then Q of the reaction is um, negative, because I'd bring this to the other side. 1722.3. 6, 9 joules, but now because this guy has two sig figs and this guy has three and this guy has five, we only get two. So I would take 
All right, I'm going to hit extend page here. Um, Q of the reaction is negative. Sorry, I brought this to the other side. This equals zero is gone. Pull out my little eraser. Oh, sorry about that. Um, is one seven zero zero joules or switching colors if I divide by three uh, negative one point seven kilojoules. So either negative seventeen hundred joules or negative one point seven kilojoules. All right, so then slide five is determine the delta H for the reaction in kilojoules per mole RxN. So delta H is delta H naught, it's negative 1.7 kilojoules per, and let's go back. Um, I decided to use trial two. Well, in trial two, you had half a gram of MgO. Well, I know that MgO is 40.30 grams per mole. And so 0 0.50 divided by 40.30, um, this ends up being 0 0.012469K, I'm being obnoxious, uh, moles. And so I'm going to go 0 0.0124069, dot, 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 moles. Well, I'm going to do that on my calculator, negative 1.7 divided by 0 0.0124069. I only get two sig figs, and it looks to me like the answer is negative 137.0205289 kilojoules per mole Rxn, but we only get two sig figs, so best answer is negative 140 kilojoules per mole Rxn. All right. Again, I'm still trying to get used to that notation. Next slide. Okay, so then the question is, just like our lab, let's see what we're supposed to get. Now remember, here's the equation, MgO solid plus 2H plus um, goes to Mg plus 2 plus H2O liquid. So this is a solid, this is a liquid, and anytime you have charges like that, it's aqueous. So what we're going to do is we got one mole. Remember, it's products minus reactants, so here's the first product, one mole times negative 467 kilojoules per mole, mole cancels mole, plus uh, one mole times negative 286 kilojoules per mole. Boom, boom. So I got that done, we got that done. Um, Minus, because now we're doing reactants, one mole, and then MgO is negative 602. So you can see that the negative and the negative, this is going to end up being a positive. Um, and then minus two moles times zero, and again, you don't even have to have this term. And so when I do that on my calculator, I get that, by the way, this is what delta H equals. I get that that equals negative... 148 kilojoules or negative 148 kilojoules per mole Rxn. Now, um, let me just check that again. Negative 467 minus 286 plus 602 because that's, um, oops, that's not what I got this time. Well, let me try it again. Um, so I got negative 467 um, plus negative 286 minus a minus, which is plus 602, and my calculator says negative 151. Oops. So negative 1 kilojoules per mole Rxn. Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute because something's bugging me right there. Okay, I'm back. That answer's right. I had to quick uh, check the scoring guidelines because I did not think that that was right. 
All right, and then finally, the last question, the accepted value and the experimental value do not agree. If the calorimeter leaked energy to the environment, would it help account for the discrepancy between the values? Um, and the answer is yes, here's why. Um, when you did delta H not for the experiment, you got negative 140. And then when you got delta H not from the tables, which is the theoretical, let's say, you got negative 151. Now ignoring the sign, because remember how this comes up to the other side, well, this is smaller than it should have been. Because remember, Q reaction, so we're ignoring the sign, because I understand that negative 140 is a smaller number than negative 155. So remember, Q reaction equals Q water equals zero. So if, if you know, and this becomes negative because it's exothermic and you bring it to the other side, but this piece is too small. 140 is smaller than 151. And what happens is this, when you ignored the calorimeter constant, you failed to account from the fact that some of the energy went into the styrofoam and the lid and the thermometer. And so in actuality, there's supposed to be another little piece here, Q calorimeter equals zero. And when we set that equal to zero, when it really wasn't, it made this answer too small. Um, so yes, just say yes, it explains. And then explain is that um, the Q of the water is too small because um, some heat, um, because some heat went into the calorimeter um, and uh, uh, into the calorimeter and the uh, uh, environment, let's say, the area around it. Um, um, this would account for the absolute value of Q reaction being too small. All right, hope that helps.